In the previous chapter, we've already discussed the determinants of long-term economic growth. If we want, would like to have a more accurate description on how fast an economy grows, we will have to uh, measure, get the, the economy's output measured in the first place. That's what we're talking about in this video, in this chapter, chapter 10, um, which is measuring a nation's income. Later in this chapter, we're going to tell you that a nation's income is the nation's output. In other words, how much we make as a nation depends upon how much we produce. Okay, and um, here we're going to talk about um, at least two measures of output. Uh, some of you probably already guessed that one of them is going to be GDP, gross domestic product. Okay? GDP is probably among the, the best known economic indicators among the general public. Even you know among those who did not have any econ background, who had never taken any econ courses. They probably know GDP uh, measures our output, okay, how much we produce. But even so, I would like to say that, you know, uh, many of you would probably find some aha moments in this chapter. Okay? Now, um, here, um, on the slide, I'm showing you um, the world map which is similar to what we used in the previous chapter. Here, um, it tells you how rich or poor a country is okay, ac across the globe um, with the uh, different colors. And the mm -hmm. bottom one here shows uh, the GDP growth rate. In other words, how fast or slow an economy grows. Okay? Uh, you see some countries like uh, China, India, and some uh, African economies uh, get dark brown. That means they uh, had a double-digit growth rate. And um, some countries get light brown. Uh, that means their uh, growth rate uh, is much lower or could even be a negative number. In other words, their economies are actually shrinking over the years instead of growing. Okay. Now here, um, more specifically, I want to drive your attention to two specific words. Uh, here I underlined. Now on the top one, when we look at the income differences across countries, we use nominal GDP per capita. Um, that means nominal GDP per, per person, per head. Okay? When we look at the bottom map, uh, talking about the growth rate, we use real GDP growth rate. Now, what do they mean? Okay? Nominal versus real. What is the difference between them? Do we have to use nominal GDP per capita? To measure income, do we have to use the real GDP to measure the growth of these economies? We're going to discuss these um, in chapter 10. Okay? Now here, we're going to start with uh, several opening questions, um, which will help us define the measure of output. Okay? Once again, we're going to talk about. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about um, GDP later in this chapter. But at the beginning, when we define the measure of output, we're doing that in the general way, not specifically um, to to focus on GDP. Okay. All right. The first question is: How is the output measured? 
Okay. Now here I give you a hypothetical example, very simple one. Uh, a comparison between two countries, A and B. A produces three apples and four oranges. B, four apples and three oranges. The question is, which country produces more? Here, I would suggest you to pause the video and think about this. Okay, how are we going to compare the output between these two economies? Some of you, I would guess, might want to add up the number of apples and number of oranges. Okay, so you would like to say that you know uh, both countries produces seven units of fruits, for example. Okay. Um, it might be okay if we're looking at you know apples and oranges. What if here we're talking about airplanes and oranges? In other words, A produces three airplanes and four oranges. B four airplanes and three oranges. Are you still going to add up the number of airplanes to the number of oranges? Definitely not, right? It doesn't make sense. Now here, it's just a simplified hypothetical example. In the real world, uh, our economy produces probably hundreds of thousands, if not more, goods and services. How are we going to figure out if we're producing more than other countries or less? or if we're producing more of goods and services than what we did last year. Okay? Now here, what we have to do is to introduce the prices. Okay? For example, here, if we know the price of apple is two bucks and price of oranges is one, then we would be able to figure out the um, difference uh, in the output between the two countries, right? So country A, for example, in we would know that um, it produces. Uh, let me write it here. Country A, okay. Um, it produces uh, three apples, right? Times the price of each apple two dollars plus uh, the amount of oranges four times the quantity one i'm sorry times the price of oranges one so um, the total amount of the output in dollars would be 10 right 10 dollars that's what country a produces country b here uh, we said that um, it produces four apples and two dollars each plus three oranges, one dollar each. So the total would be uh, 11 dollars, right? Here, we would have a very crystal clear idea or answer to the question. Country B produces more. And we could even say it produces one more dollar of output than country A, right? So here, what we are emphasizing is the market value or the dollar amount that the prices gave us. Okay? So when we define the measure of output, the first key phrase here is the market value. Okay, it should be the market value of all goods and services. All right. Now, why we would like to introduce the prices? The economic intuition behind this is the price is a measure of the amount of productive resources we use to produce that specific good or service. In other words, here, when we look at the price of apples, which is $2, and price of oranges, $1, 
we could say that we spend two dollars a month of productive resources that might be labor okay farmers labor or it might be you know um the land or the fertilizers and other stuff we use to produce apples right or we could even compare the productive resources used between the two goods here based upon the prices we could see that the amount of productive resources used to produce apple is twice as much as that used to produce oranges okay in other words we believe that the uh, dollar amount okay um, in the prices tells us very important information about uh, the resources uh, especially the scarce resources we used to uh, produce different goods and services. Okay. Um, here we already see the benefit from using the prices. So no matter how many goods and services involved, eventually I can just give you one dollar amount showing how much this economy produce produces right um, but at the same time we should be aware of the cost in other words when we use the prices to define the measure of output we would probably get in trouble and later in this chapter we're going to talk about the possible issues we're going to encounter simply because we use the prices uh, in 